Hey guys, Salsa right here. So, I just started dating again, of course, and <laughs> you guys had told me to keep dating, and I ended up dating Q, and now me and Q are like, weird. We're just weird. I'm not gonna say, because it's like a gray area, and it's not a gray area because of me. Let's just say, I'm a black and white cut and dry type of person. I really just don't have time for the bullshit. But Q is not built the way that I am. He is a little bit more Q. So <laughs> let's just say me and Q are to be continued. And I have been dating a lot of guys um, because everybody's been asking me out on dates. And if they don't show up to the date or they're late to the date or they don't call or they cancel or they something like that. I cut them off. I never talk to them again. I just cut off the whole thing altogether. And guys are like, why are you so hard? They're telling me I'm impossible. They're telling me that I'm, I'm being too hard on men. And I've heard this throughout my life for a very, very long time. I've heard this. And you know, what's interesting about being a woman is that you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. If you're too easy and you're too nice, they call you a hoe. They call you a slut. They call you a tramp. If you're too mean and you, you make them work hard for you or present them with some type of challenge, then you're a bitch. So all my life, I've either been treated bad because of me being too nice, or I've been told that I'm too hard because I'll have all of these rules and I have all these things that, you know, men have to go through before I'm able to trust them. So I just want men to understand something, okay? When you meet a woman and she's a nice woman, she's smart, maybe she's beautiful, maybe she has a great sense of humor, maybe she is, you know, nurturing, maybe she is family oriented, uh, successful, whatever it is that you enjoy about this woman, okay? If she's been through anything, okay, as horrible as I have been through, it is going to be difficult for her to be able to let her guard down. Now, as women, we are taught to protect ourselves and we have to be selective about the men that we choose. We have to have a better sifting process. And throughout my whole life, I've had like a difficult time choosing because my sifting process has been, I don't know, I think I try to give people the benefit of the doubt because I'm really, really kind. I'm really, really sweet. I really, really like um, to give people a chance to show me who they are and I love to forgive and I'm just very loving and I try not to be judgmental because I don't want people to judge me for you know things that I may have that you know some people might not like like I'm quirky you know there are certain things that you know some people might not like. And so if I meet anyone and they have like a bad habit, maybe they're a smoker or maybe they did some things in their past, I try to overlook that stuff. And my mother has always said, hey, you know, you're doing, you too, you're too nice, you're too nice. And you know, my mother's nice too. So um, we were having a conversation the other day and she was talking about why she has chosen to be celibate for so many years because she's been celibate for a long time. Like I haven't seen my mother be in a relationship since my little sister and my little sister is like 22, 21, 22. So I haven't seen my mother be inside of a relationship. So I always said, you know, I didn't want to be that woman. I don't want to be single for the rest of my life. But at the same time, when every man is open to dating and wanting to be with me and telling me how beautiful I am and trying to holler at me. And then there's men that don't try to holler at me like men don't try to holler at me when I'm out somewhere. It's weird. It's like they're afraid I'm going to reject them. They're afraid of the rejection, so they don't really walk up to me. But online, everyone is trying to holler at me. It's weird. It's like if they talk to me online, you know, first, then maybe when they see me, they may not be as, you know, intimidated, I want to say. That's really weird to me because it, it made me think, it made me think about, you know, am I ugly in person, right? <laughs> Like, to some guys, am I, like, atrocious or some shit? So, anyway, a lot of guys are like, you're so hard on me, you're so rough, you're so challenging. But you have to understand, if you're a man and you're trying to get at a woman, and she's been through what I've been through. And let's talk about what I've been through. I've been molested. I've been gang raped. I've been date raped. I've been beat on. I've been in domestic violence relationships. I have been cheated on. I've been lied to. I've been stolen from. No man I've ever been with has expressed a level of love for me or showed a level of love for me that, you know, will make me believe that, you know, I was someone that he really, really cared for. That's never happened to me, not even my father. So when I think back of all of my relationships and I think about how many times I've heard men say, I love you, their actions never ran parallel with those words. So 
So now that I'm older and I can comprehend what was happening to me in my past, a lot of men were just saying, Sansari, I love you because, you know, whatever reasons they felt the need to have to tell me that inside of my relationship. So just because a man is telling you, just because a man says he loves you doesn't mean that he does. And it's the same thing for women, you know. So I've never been on the receiving end of love from a man. And I, and I when I say and, and I mean that true love, you know, that, that love I see people having in relationships where their friendship is so strong and they look after each other. I mean, that that true love, I've never had that. I don't know what, what that feels like. So when guys come to me now and they're like, yo, you're so hard, I have to explain to them what I've been through first in order for them to understand where I stand, you know, and, and why I have so many processes before I can decide, well, this is the man that I want to be with. You know, a lot of men don't understand that process. So I try to, you know, be nice. I'm a nice, I, of course, I'm a fun person. I'm a nice person. And, and I'm one of those people that I could be friends uh, with someone, with, with any person. I can be platonic, but I don't like bullshit. Okay. And if I sense a little bit of bullshit, I'm pulling away. And within the last year or so, you know, the bullshit that I have experienced with men in general within the last year and a half, it's been real excessive, you know, so I have been really, really, really like picky about who I choose to date. So, you know, fellas, when you meet women who are like who I am, um, I, I don't want you to feel like I'm I don't want you to think that women who are going through what I'm going through and we are, um, you know, kind of making it hard for you, hard. Um, I don't want you to feel like we're taking out on you the things that's happened to us from other men. You know, like, don't blame a new man for old man shit. You know, I tell women that all the time. It isn't that we're blaming you. You know, it, it, it isn't that... Um, we are trying to, you know, make you carry the burdens of another man or a previous man. What we're trying to do is sift out whether you are actually that man or not. Are you, are you a bad man? Are you a good man? Are you a man worth my time? Are you someone, um, I can consider being with? These are all things that I'm thinking inside of my mind as I'm dating a guy. And if it feels wrong, if it even feels slightly wrong, I'll listen. Cause before I could feel like a little slight, something was wrong and I would give somebody the benefit of the doubt. No, now it's like, Oh, that's over. That's over. That's over. And I'm doing that a lot. You know, and, and because I was doing that a lot before, I was like, well, maybe um, I'm doing that because I'm afraid to be in a relationship or I'm afraid to experience something. You know, these are the things that I was thinking in my mind. But at the end of the day, that's not even the case. It's just that there are a lot of men out there and a lot of them don't fit me. You know what I mean? And I have to think about that. A lot of men are coming at me, but it doesn't mean that each one of these men are a proper fit or they're appropriate. If I like a man, and this goes for any man who is dating a woman who, you know, he may feel like he's having a difficult time with this woman because of the things that she's been through, you know, just go with the flow, go with the process. I mean, you know, if it's too much for you, you can always say, hey, this is too much for me. I can't dig it. You know, you can, you can walk off. But if it's a woman that you really like, that you really want to kick it with, that you really enjoy, you know, take the, take the time out. Have the patience, you know, work it out. You know, it's, it's not even that I've had a lot of men do like horrible things to me. It's more of the men that I did choose were so bad to me with time that I just was like, oh my God, you know, like maybe I need to choose better. You know, even after I've built a friendship, like a lot of people say, hey, you know, why don't you wait and build a friendship first? Well, most of the men I've dated, I've been in a solid friendship with first before I even ended up in the relationship. So that's not even, um, you know, I don't, I don't usually like jump into a situation with just some random guy. I usually am his friend first for a while and then I ended up dating him and and it's still even after building that friendship first um it, it, it's still certain things that men don't show women it's, it's a lot of secrets men keep a lot of secrets so you know during my process of dating I'm trying to figure out what secrets he has and if he reveals these secrets to me and I find out is it enough for me to stay with him 
that's mainly it so <laughs> but fellas I just want you to not give up on women who have experienced uh, you know the things that I have or you know any woman who has been through anything you know a lot they're they're harder to get you know they're very very hard to get and um, it was funny is a lot of guys look at me and might see some old pictures like of me modeling and they automatically assume I'm easy like and, and sometimes people even think because I was in the swingers lifestyle I must be easy you know no 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 working at the swingers club or having a you know swingers experience with the man I'm in a relationship with that's that's a whole other thing that's a whole other thing I think with um women who are promiscuous I think they're comfortable with being promiscuous you know what I mean I think uh, my sex appeal and how sexy I am as a woman I think a lot of people might misunderstand that and might believe that you know behind closed doors I may have a lot of sex partners it's weird but I don't even I really have sex like uh, it's just hard to explain like looks are so deceiving you know what I mean like don't judge a book by its cover you know like try to keep an open mind when you're dealing with people and you know that's what I try to do because i was always looking at men from one aspect so when they whoever they would show me that's who I would believe they are but then I realized you know people in general are three-dimensional you know if it's only three dimensions it could, it could be way more than that so you know there are many faces to people and with time I had to learn that so I appreciate you watching make sure you like subscribe and share have vision and stay focused namaste